What's up everybody, Steve here. I'm gonna talk about two different triple net commercial investments that I have been part of recently and brokered the deals. And I wanna talk about them specifically, one from the buyer side and one from the seller side, representing the buyer in one of the cases and representing the seller in the other case. And if you guys are going to be buying into commercial property, specifically triple net leases, we're gonna talk about uh, some of the things that you do need to, to watch out for if you guys are gonna be investing in triple net properties. But first, before we get into those scenarios, we need to know exactly what triple net means. A lot of times you guys will see it if you're researching properties, it'll say NNN, which is basically net, 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 meaning if you guys are um, an owner of a commercial piece of real estate and you lease it to a tenant, the tenant is usually responsible in a triple net lease. They're responsible for not only paying rent, but also paying for the taxes, paying for the insurance, and paying for the maintenance. Now, the maintenance can be negotiated in some cases, and in other cases, it's up to the tenant's responsibility for all maintenance associated with the property, including roof, HVAC, exterior maintenance, and so forth. Now investors love these kind of properties because they are low headache properties in most cases and a lot of times they have leases that can range from you know five years to 10 years, even 99 years. So they're in many cases long-term leases but the investor doesn't have to deal with the ongoing maintenance uh, associated with the properties. Now the investors in many cases are getting a lower cap rate because of the convenience associated with leasing these type of properties out and it's justified because they don't necessarily have the headaches associated with these properties comparable to say like an apartment complex where if you are the landlord and there's a toilet leaking or the HVAC goes out or other issues with the properties then the landlord is responsible for rectifying these issues associated with the properties. However, in my experience specifically on these two deals, and I've had issues on, in the past in dealing with triple net properties in brokering these, but I just wanna talk about two recent deals that came up where both sellers in both situations are gonna come up short because of because they just were not proactive with their properties and there's simple things that you can do to ensure that your inv investment is still sound and secure. Now in the first scenario, we were representing the seller of this property. Now this property was primarily an office building and the office building really had two different tenants and the tenants were triple net tenants. So these tenants were responsible for paying the real estate taxes they're responsible for paying the insurances, and they're also responsible for all upkeep of the buildings. Now this included uh, roof, the HVAC, any damages to the property, any kind of leaks, essentially anything that would go wrong with the property, the tenants were responsible for. Now when we took the property to list on the open market, one of the main tenants moved out of the property already, so it was vacant, and there was still another tenant in the other side, and that tenant was set to leave in about a two month period. Now we put the property on the market and that when that second tenant left, the problem was the tenant really did not take care of this property at all. It was actually a dentist that leased out the, the other side of the property. And uh, unfortunately, there were many issues, many deferred maintenance issues that the tenant just did not address. And when the tenants moved out, we started getting activity from potential buyers, and eventually we got into contract with a prospective buyer. Now, the prospective buyer, they went and they did, during their due diligence period, they did uh, a general inspection, and the general inspection really came up with multiple issues associated with the property. Number one was infestation of termites. There were termites uh, in certain walls of the property. There were termites in the, the, the truss system of the property. And uh, the second thing was water damage that was getting 
um, in an area of the soffit of the roof that was coming in, in into one of the walls and then on the back side of the property where the water where the uh, electric meters were there's water getting behind the electric meter and from the inside of the property you could tell that there was damage there and it, it was readily observ uh, observable by anybody and now that tenant should have addressed those issues a long time ago and when you're dealing with you know any kind of termite issues or water damage if you don't address those and and take care of it right away your expenditures to to fix those problems can be way more costly if they're not addressed immediately so it's important to take care of issues uh, that arise in a timely manner because ultimately when the buyer um, had their inspections and they had their contractors out uh, we actually got the seller to agree to open up certain walls interior walls and it was a mess there were uh, trusses there were um, there were two by four walls that were completely rotted away from termite as well as wood rot from just just years of uh, water infiltration and ultimately the cost the bids from the uh, the the contractors to the buyer were anywhere from a hundred to a hundred and thirty thousand dollars so these were kind of issues that the buyer was not necessarily anticipating and our seller was stuck in a position our seller was stuck whether the seller would go ahead and and take care of those issues and rebuild these walls and sister up the truss systems maybe even having an engineer come out and everything else so ultimately the seller didn't want to have anything to do with that and i just expressed to the seller look the if if we don't negotiate a credit with these people or you fix these issues this deal is going to die and you're going to have this issue with the new buyer no matter what if we go back to market so you pretty much pretty much have one of two options or three options first one is to let the deal die which is not a good option uh, second thing is to basically do all those repair items and the third thing is to maybe not do any of the repair items and to negotiate a credit and it was all due to the tenant and the tenant's negligence but more so the landlord's negligence which we'll talk more about in some of the tips to uh, protect your investment and now the second scenario we're actually currently in contract I'm representing the buyer on this deal and uh, ultimately a similar situation it was a trip triple net lease on a property and uh, the the tenants moved out of the property so the property has been sitting vacant and it had not only massive roof leak damage it had uh, termites and it had extreme mold so it was kind of the trifecta now the seller we're still negotiating renegotiating right now and the seller is you know they're upset because they didn't realize the extent of the damage and ultimately for the buyer to go through the process of fixing everything the buyer has to be incentivized and that's just to get a better deal obviously they're gonna have to get a better deal to offset the cost to repair everything but to to have the buyer go through this and also delay the buyer to get into this building and and conduct business and start their business that's a, another deterring factor for the buyer so ultimately we're trying to negotiate a really good deal on the behalf of the buyer and it could work to the buyer's advantage um, there's a chance that the deal might not go through if the if the buyer is not incentivized enough to close on the deal uh, time will tell but the seller is going to be at a loss in one fashion or another because the seller now is going to have to disclose all the issues associated with the property and or go ahead and start doing the necessary repairs for all the damage which is quite significant so now over the years i've dealt with other investors that deal in commercial real estate and they do love these triple net properties now the one of one of the biggest things um the two main things that you really have to pay attention to if you're buying and investing in these types of properties number one is obviously to get confirmation that the property taxes have been paid which a lot of times you can pull up with your clerk records and also uh, the appropriate insurances are on the property so it's important that you guys request that information showing that the the property is heavily insured and the taxes are paid because that protects your investment because the tenants are ultimately responsible for that the second thing is and more importantly I think is 
you, you want to send somebody, maybe a contractor or a good handyman into these properties for an annual inspection or maybe even twice a year, it's important that um, somebody goes in and is just do, doing these routine inspections to ensure that you know if there is a roof leak that you guys are catching it on time and if there is then you're going to instruct the uh, tenant to go ahead and hire a contractor to resolve the issue because again if a uh, if a property has a small water leak over time especially in the state of florida it's going to lead to mold it's going to lead to wood rot and it's just going to you know a simple say five thousand dollar fix today if not fixed could equate into hundreds of thousands of dollars in future repairs if it's not fixed today so i would say those are the two main important things that you have to look at if you're an investor buying into triple net properties yes triple net properties are uh, an incredible source of income for people that want to deal with less headaches but just these small tips can really help to protect your investment and uh, anyway, I appreciate you guys being on with me today. If you got any value at it, I appreciate a big thumbs up. And uh, if you've not subscribed before, you want to probably subscribe if you guys are into real estate, business, and personal finance. I talk about all that on this channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot.